Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about surprises. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what has surprised you the most in your career as a software engineer? I would say the speed at which people grow complacent. That, I would say, is probably the thing that surprised me the most. It's... Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a uh, a observation on you now, and your experiences might differ. But what I've found to be interesting and very shocking is how fast. And this is not just developers. This is actually at a company level. How fast a IT company can go uh, can go from having the idea of quality and trying to ship really good features and this is the sort of stuff that you say I like to say that it's very similar to test driven development if you ask people on average do you do TDD or do you have a high level of quality in terms of testing and so forth literally everybody will say yes of course we do because everybody does that right it's like asking somebody do you believe in world peace Yes, of course we do. And then you ask a few countries who have a few hidden nuclear silos, and they of course also believe in world peace. It's just that we kind of differ on how we're going to achieve that thing. And it's the same thing with IT companies. If you ask them, oh, do you have a high quality product, do you have a sensation of quality, etc., etc., they will all say the same thing. Of course we do. But if you actually start working there, and you actually start doing the work, and you will very quickly realize how much is actually failing practically all the time. On an almost daily basis, I think, is the average for any like moving in uh, high stakes uh, IT company, you will have various levels of issues. You will have tons of stuff that is only around for legacy reasons, or you will have like severe issues or bugs, things that are like not really working, but uh, the no uh, you don't have a way of acting effectively on it because you're either blocked by some other team or you're blocked by a process or some type of internal politics or you simply don't know what the issue is and the investment to investigate the year that's not really on your table because you don't have time to do this thing properly because the cost of doing it properly is higher than what the company is willing to invest in and this is the complacency uh, complacency i'm talking about you will be surprised at how fast you realize that uh, this utopian vision a lot of junior and new software developers have of how they can make all the things all the things perfect it's it's a big fat lie that you're telling yourself it's a delusion at uh, at worst i would say at best it is it is naive uh, because uh, the honest truth is that uh, the are the practice of s software development and the way that we do software development is deeply deeply flawed and the only companies, as I've said before, that I've ever seen who's sort of good at this, and I promise you the hype is higher than the reality, is the fan companies. Like They are the ones who are claiming that they're really good at this, and now the companies are claiming that as well. But as I said, remember that every single company claims it. It's just that these companies are famous, and the no-name companies or the, com the average companies, they will tell you the same thing on average but the reality is usually very different when you get on to the inside of things i've worked at the like big international companies before where i like to I, I, f I thought it was hilarious because they released an infomercial which was supposed to help with employer branding and me and my coworkers, we just sat there and kind of went oh is that how it is to work here oh i have i had never realized and it's I, honest to God, guys, I promise you that the same sort of thing is true in the fan companies and so and so forth. If you believe that everything is perfect uh, in the in the fan companies or like high stakes companies like that, I'm pretty sure that you just swallowed the infomercial, just as the people who were getting employed at my com at my previous job. Uh, they went through the same thing and then you actually get onto the inside and you realize that there are a lot of there are like i mean of course the higher up you go and like the more quality focused your company is the more of a pure it company it is the higher the quality but it's still it's not going to be perfect i promise you it's not going to be perfect and 
this is the thing that really did surprise me because I really did believe when I was start starting to become a software developer that the end goal was to create this perfect harmony of a system that just did all the things. And when you do, do it for a little while, you start to realize that that's not really what it is about. It's actually just about finding a sweet spot between legacy and problems and so forth and things that are going to cost money or like really hurt your revenue stream that is the that that is the art that you are trying to master in practically every company because the the, the there is this and this is so horrible when you start it's like losing losing your innocence in a way it's like you finally figuring out that santa isn't real i promise you he is i'm just saying if he wasn't real it would be the same thing as realizing that and you realize that here i have been taught that software engineering it's all about perfection it's about test stream development high quality and trying to continuously push it and be the best that we can be and you realize very quickly that the cost of doing that is so high that most companies are not willing to pay it they don't want it and even if they say they want it the will they will put you in a situation where if you try to do it they will start to question you or they will make it uncomfortable for you so you will feel a very strong incentive to not do it because the speed is more important so everybody wants you to do this perfect things but not at the cost that it's going to cost in order to do it so what are you going to do well there's pressure on you now to deliver really quickly and you know that you should probably do it do all the right things but at the same time you don't know if you can do that and still meet the expectations and you're more interested in keeping your job and keeping your stakeholders happy and since they can't really evaluate the impact of you sh cutting cutting a few corners you start cutting a little bit and the quality drops and then you do it a little bit more and the quality drops and you continue that process until as i said you find that sweet spot between all right, we have some minor issues or bugs or things that we kind of just sweep under the rug. We don't really care about them. But for the most part, things are working. And honestly, that is the thing that surprised me, surprises me the most. The hypocrisy, uh, well, it's technically it's not hypocrisy because it is in, it, that's the problem. It's all in, in the interpretation. What do you mean when you mean, when you talk about quality? But the thing that really does stand out to me now the, uh, these days at the very least is how quickly you get there like regardless of the system i have never been in a product where they really did try to push for high quality work process and so forth except for in certain areas where as i said when when you have to do it because if you don't do it the cost of you not doing it is so high that it's going to impact your revenue stream and that is the like the one truth that i can really give you about all of this it all at the end of the day comes down to that balance that uh, cost value ratio that i've been saying talking about a few times if the thing that you have an issue with is going to cost a painful amount of money you're going to fix it but if it's going to cost a painful amount of money to fix this fix the thing they're not going to do it or they're not going to want they're, 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 they might say that they care about it but then at the end of the day they're not going to do it because it's more important for them to, to save the money that it's going to cost to fix it so what I want you to take away from this is that the thing that was most surprising to me as a software engineer was that when you train to become a software developer you learn about all the good practices and you, you learn about perfection and you get sold this idea that software engineering is about building the best thing that you can and continuously pushing it trying to be better faster more uh, quality focused the reality is very different. The reality is that you're trying to find a balance between how much legacy can we sustain as a company versus how much uh, that is that going to impact our revenue stream because there is a sweet spot to the whole thing. Because if you try to create a perfect system, the cost of you doing that is actually so high that it's going to impact your revenue stream. Uh, that's at least how my, my many companies feel. I'm not completely sure if all companies understand just how that equation balances out because if you look at the more successful fan companies and so forth, they have a very expensive development process. But uh, if you think about it, that is all, uh, it, it, it's at the same time it does convert into quite a lot of revenue. And I also believe that 
if you make good investment, you can actually have a very high quality development process and still keep like keep it cheap. But most companies are not willing to invest. They're not. The, the, that's not what they're after. They're trying to get quick wins, and that is the problem for you as a software developer because. That means that the company is complacent very quickly in terms of how much quality do they care about. And they put you in a situation where even if you have a quality mindset, you're not now going to have to choose. Are you going to be the unperformant developer who really goes for quality towards someone who doesn't really know what that is and doesn't really appreciate it in the way they should? It's there's a I'm just saying there's a lot of incentive for you to cut corners in practically every IT company on the face of this planet. Have a great day.